As I sat down to write the script for An Honest Look at Ruby's editing, something happened, and a lot of things came to light. Many of them proved certain statements I've made in recent videos, and I couldn't stand by and let these revelations go unaddressed. Now, An Honest Look at Ruby's editing is happening. I'll do it next week. I'll do it sometime soon. But this video kind of took precedent, which is why I'm doing it in a different format than I usually do. About a week ago from when you're watching this, RT fired 13% of their staff. 50 people lost their jobs across all areas of the company, except for their big personalities. According to one report I have yet to confirm, producer Cohen Wooten was among those let go. And in response to this, Gray Haddock announced that he had left Rooster Teeth several days earlier. So why am I talking about this? Rumor chasing and reporting has never been in my wheelhouse. I keep all that stuff on my Twitter, which you can follow at EA Mediocrity 4. Well, let's rewind a bit. Sure, a studio is risking money, actors and directors their reputation, technicians their future job prospects, but a producer's entire livelihood can be uprooted from just one disaster. Fuck you! I was right! Fuck you! I was right! Fuck you! I was right! Make no mistake. Whatever laws of diminishing returns may be affecting Ruby's commercial success are insignificant compared to the fact that Jinlock failed, and it failed hard. Let's rewind a bit more to see how we got here. Gray Haddock helped create RT's animation department alongside Monty Oum. Gray became the main producer and the head of animation, effectively becoming Monty's boss. Rooster Teeth's leaders like Matt Hollum handled the business side of things. Monty handled the creative. And Gray's job as producer was to be their middleman, making sure Monty had what he needed and that Matt's bottom line didn't take the hit. This is all bog standard studio stuff, as are the more controversial claims of long hours and a lack of overtime pay. But if these sources are to be trusted, and I do trust the source of some of these claims, things didn't start getting bad until 2016. Rooster Teeth's animation department was not equipped to deal with two large productions at the same time. As early as Volume 4's finale in early 2017, Genlock began eating away at resources. Series animators were getting pulled away from Ruby in favor of Genlock. Budget that should have gone to the crew were instead given to big name actors like Dakota Fanning and David Tennant. Most damningly, Grey forced both projects to be worked on simultaneously. This led to the hellish work environment and the declining quality throughout Volume 5 and less of Volume 6 as Genlock was mostly finished by that point. Because of how many resources he sunk into his passion project, he needed Genlock to not just do well, he needed it to become RT's new flagship franchise, the way Ruby had when it premiered back in 2013. But here's the thing. Lightning did not strike twice this time. Jinlock is simply not as fresh, ambitious, or exciting as Ruby. Ruby was and is colorful, vibrant, really dumb, but wears its lack of intelligence on its sleeve. It had numerous cliché elements, but was mostly unlike anything on the web at that time. Not only that, but it came at a perfect time. Red vs. Blue had been the previous flagship franchise. For many people, Season 10 was the perfect conclusion. It now only exists for the niche fanboy audience. It has not aged or died gracefully, but it did gracefully take a backseat and let Ruby become the new flagship. Ruby is still going. It has yet to reach a true conclusion to its storyline. A replacement for its status as flagship franchise is premature. Especially considering Genlock's quality, or lack thereof, it's slow, drab, cliche, lifeless, and dull. It's not the worst thing I've talked about on my channel, but it was far too uninteresting to get a decent continuous podcast out of it. Gray forced long hours, changed things up on the fly, created a terrible work environment where animators couldn't always work on the show they wanted to, and even the ones who tried doing good work on Genlock were compromised by a constantly changing script and outside influences from other production companies. Gray forced the TV format of 20 minute long episodes into the production, then used RT's connection to Warner Media to get it on Cartoon Network, which is also owned by Warner Media. And even then, it has only maintained an audience on TV because it's directly in the shadow of Dragon Ball Super. Gray's egotistical passion project is not fully to blame for RT's failings. 
Hell, I heard a lot of what got cut was the game division, and that falls on the Lone Ranger 2013 level failure of Vicious Circle. It's also unlikely Gray was outright fired. People in his position don't just get fired. He stepped down as head of animation amidst the overtime controversies, and from there was likely <coughs> heavily encouraged to relieve himself from his position. This whole story does highlight how Gray's ego and incompetence were likely a major source of all of Ruby's production issues, many of which I've highlighted in other videos and some I'll highlight in the next. So what now? Well, hopefully the creative people get jobs elsewhere in the industry. Hopefully the change in management will be a major benefit to Ruby. We likely won't get a Genlock Season 2, which I'm not saying that's a good thing, but I will say I'm not exactly weeping about it. I've also heard rumors cycling around regarding multiple companies that Warner Media is trying to consolidate their IPs to better compete with the likes of Disney. Either way, Ruby isn't going anywhere. It's proven itself a lucrative IP. Even if Rooster Teeth completely goes the way of Machinima or Screw Attack, Ruby will be picked up by someone else in the Warner Media umbrella and live on. As for the workplace right now, I hope those fired manage to land on their feet and find jobs that are better suited towards their needs and passions. And no, Thomas, unions will not magically solve the issue. For starters, unions, historically speaking, make things worse in these situations. There's nothing a union can do that a group of workers can't get together and do on their own anyway. When corporate corruption negatively affects both the workers and the product, the only solution is to hit them where it hurts. Don't get RT first. Hold these men accountable. Demand better leadership within the company. Make it to where they have to either clean up their act or die a slow and painful financial death. Support IPs that you want and don't get suckered in by shit like Jinlock or the continued existence of RVB. We, as the consumers, are the solution. I'm Mediocrity4. Thanks for watching.